The office of Hong Kong's most popular newspaper, once more a crime scene. In an operation involving up to 500 police, journalists were ordered to leave the newsroom while their computers were examined. Five executives were arrested, including the paper's editor-in-chief, Ryan Law. All were taken by police from their homes during early morning raids. They're suspected of being involved in the publication of articles that encouraged foreign countries to impose sanctions on Hong Kong. The suspects have been arrested on strong evidence that they are conspiring to endanger national security. The action is taken against the criminals who make use of journalistic work as a tool to further their criminal activities. The newspaper's owner, Jimmy Lai, was arrested and charged under a new national security law last year. That followed a previous raid on the Apple Daily. Lai is serving a 20-month jail term for taking part in unauthorized assemblies. In May, police froze more than $64 million in assets belonging to Lai, and on Thursday, froze two million more belonging to three companies linked to Apple Daily. The paper's known for its often strong criticism of China's government, mixing pro-democracy discourse with celebrity gossip. When the national security law was imposed on Hong Kong almost a year ago, the territory's chief executive, Carrie Lam, said it would only affect a small number of people. Since then, almost 100 people have been arrested and more than 60 charged, including leaders of what's left of the pro-democracy movement here. Lam says that that law has ended months of chaos here and restored stability. And stability is what China's leaders want most right now, as the ruling Communist Party prepares to mark its 100th anniversary. Adrian Brown, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong. Well, let's speak to Tom Grundy, who's the editor-in-chief and co-founder of Hong Kong Free Press, joins us from Hong Kong via Skype. Uh, Tom, first up, this is another step beyond, isn't it? Uh, what do we know about the content that was deemed illegal? That's a great question. Not much because the police won't say. Um, 500 officers deployed this morning, going through reporters' computers, seizing 38 PCs during this five-hour raid. Um, this is despite the authorities saying press freedom is intact since the security law. We saw five executives uh, handcuffed, paraded some of them through the newsroom, and the national security chief, Steve Lee, saying that these uh, relate to 30 articles um, that somehow were connected uh, with a conspiracy um, to prompt sanctions against Hong Kong and China. Um, what we don't know is whether these are articles, opinion pieces, or editorials. And when we asked the national security chief to clarify, or when the security chief was asked later on, um, they don't directly answer, and they say um, that we must all follow the law. Um, but, of course, this is bound to have a chilling effect unless we understand what exactly is being targeted here. Right. I I'm wondering how it is for you as a journalist, you know, working in this kind of atmosphere, you know, how do you go about your work? Well, this is the first time a newspaper has been targeted over its content. Uh, last time the Apple Daily was targeted, it was more about uh, Jimmy Lai, the tycoon who co-founded it. As for us, it, it's, it's difficult to say, you have to ask, but, uh, you know, we're an impartial outlet. We're not a pro-democracy tabloid. Um, and our sort of mantra since the beginning, months ago, has been to keep calm and carry on, report the news, uh, prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. It's, it's just a case, I think, of taking things day by day and, and trying to operate normally at the moment for us. And is that the mood amongst your fellow journalists working in, in, in all the various outlets in Hong Kong, this kind of, you know, resolute stance, if you like? Yeah, I think the focus certainly at the moment is on the public broadcaster, RTHK and Apple Daily, and, and our staff are more than happy to deploy tonight to watch the printing presses um, were into action with the Apple Daily saying that they're going to press on. We understand they may print half a million copies uh, tonight because Hong Kongers tend to 
in lieu of being able to protest during COVID, um, voice support for Apple Daily by clearing it from the shelves. Uh, that's certainly what happened last year when it was raided, and we expect that to happen tomorrow morning um, when these copies are sent to newsstands across the city. Um, so despite they're having uh, many of their computers seized, it looks like the paper's going to be pressing on, the show must go on, if you will, and we're going to be bearing witness to that process this evening. So you do, you do think they will be allowed to print tonight? Yes, so I, I mean, I think it's more indirect sort of um, pressure that the paper is facing, whether it's arrests of its di directors, um, some of its assets, 2.3 million US dollars worth of, of assets um, connected to three Apple Daily uh, companies um, were, were seized as part of this. So it's, it's not as draconian, I suppose, as literally shutting down the printing presses, but, but moreover, perhaps death by a thousand cuts over a longer period. So who knows? with rumours swirling that the government wants this paper shut down, whether it will still be in print by the end of the year. And you say that it's uh, one of the leading pro-democracy dailies. It's the only one left. So although the print edition doesn't make money, they've shut it down in Taiwan, it's very symbolically important that they do go to print. And, you know, Hong Kongers have said that they will buy the Apple daily even if it's blank. Yeah, the only one left. All right, Tom, thanks for that. Tom Grundy there in Hong Kong.